With the football season on hold until bowl week, we turn our attention to Gamecock basketball, who renewed the Palmetto State rivalry against the Clemson Tigers this weekend at the Colonial Life Arena. We break down this game and a little more on this week's episode of Capital City Sports. Let's go. <laughs> Hello and welcome into this week's edition of Capital City Sports. I'm Pat Cloney. Like I said, football season is on hold until bowl week. We'll get to that later, but now it's basketball season. This week, Carolina played its first big game of the season at home at Colonial Life Arena against the Clemson Tigers. We have your highlight and more. Let's take a look. Gamecock basketball took on the Clemson Tigers at Colonial Life Arena on Sunday. The game was low scoring at first, thanks to good defense like this blocked shot by Michael Carrera. There were plenty of missed opportunities too. Here, Lakeem Jackson can't get the putback to fall and it kicks out of bounds. Here, it's Clemson's KJ McDaniels who can't get the shot to fall. But the Tigers would get on the board soon. It's Rod Hall with the layup. Then it's Demarcus Harrison who puts in the mid-range jumper. Then on the other side of the court, it's Devin Booker who intercepts the Lachey Page pass and brings it for the dunk and one. South Carolina would respond though. Here it's Brenton Williams with the three. Then it's Bruce Ellington who dishes it off to Mindaugas Casinas who gets the shot to go as the shot clock expires. Clemson with the ball now, but it's Bruce with the steal and the layup. Carolina making this game interesting once again. But it's Columbia native Jordan Roper with the response for Clemson. He hits the three. Brenton Williams has a Gamecock response with this little floater for two. That's followed by Mindaugas Casinas under the hoop. He gets the shot to go and one. Then in transition, it's Bruce Ellington to Eric Smith to Lakeem Jackson, who puts the shot in for two. Now check out Bruce on the defensive side. He gets the big charge and he is pumped. Carolina getting the crowd into it. Just before half, it's Brenton Williams, pulls up just short of the hoop and gets the shot to fall. Then it's Clemson's last possession of the half and it's blocked away. Carolina goes into the half, trailing by just one. Second half now, here's Williams again with the layup. He led all Carolina scorers with 16 points. Then Lachey Page can't get the layup to fall, but Lakeem Jackson gets the putback. Next possession, Page to Ellington for two points. Carolina ahead five now. But then the tides turn in Clemson's favor. It's Jordan Roper with the steal and the dunk. Clemson starting to capitalize on Gamecock mistakes. Here, Lachey Page can't get the shot to go. And in transition, it's Devin Booker with the two points and one. Here, Brenton Williams gets his shot blocked by Booker. On the other side of the court, it's Jordan Roper to guess who? Booker with the points again. With just over three minutes left, Carolina starts to make a charge. Brenton Williams with the three. And then Bruce Ellington with the tough layup gets it to go. Carolina down just six. But on the other side of the court, it's Demarcus Harrison with the dagger. The three, Clemson up nine. Final shot for Carolina doesn't go. Clemson with the rebound and the clock will expire. Tigers take this one 64 to 55. They're in first place in the ACC. Pat Cloney, CCS. Hello and welcome into this week's segment of The Boardroom. I'm Pat Cloney. Joined by me is my special guest, Zach Brown. Zach, you're looking pretty spiffy today. Well, thanks, Pat. It's good to be here, and thanks for having me. But we're not here to talk about my dashing appearance. We're here to talk about South Carolina basketball. Of course. So, Pat, the Gamecocks came into this year with the hopes that we could sweep arch rival Clemson in the three major sports, baseball, basketball, and football. That's right. However, this past weekend, these dreams were shot down as South Carolina lost a tough battle to Clemson, 64-55. to 
Tragic. South Carolina came out and their offense was great in the first half. Going into halftime, we were only down by one point. However, in the second half of the game, the Gamecocks weren't quite able to keep pace. Talk about that a little bit. That's exactly right, Zach. Carolina, really their problem in the second half was communication. They lost a lot of offensive possessions through turnovers, balls out of bounce. What they really need to do is they really need to start talking down low. I saw Bruce Ellington make a lot of bad passes on the baseline, and that might be just because people weren't talking. And that resulted in a lot of turnovers. Clemson got the ball. They scored 24 points in transition. That also means Carolina isn't getting back on defense, but we'll talk about that later. Plus side on the offense for Carolina. Brenton Williams had 16 points. Obviously, the neck injury he suffered in the St. John's game not really affecting him that much. Also, Bruce Ellington, in just his second game back from football, he had 12 points. He looked solid. And, Pat, you do mention Bruce Ellington. Bruce being an amazing athlete playing two major sports in a Division I school, being football and basketball. Uh, Frank Martin, at the beginning of the season, was actually the person who convinced Bruce to come back and play basketball. He was contemplating not playing the second sport this year. It seems like... Frank Martin and Bruce Ellington have really been working together in tandem as a team, and it seems like that relationship could build onto a more positive note in the future for not only Frank and Bruce, but the team as a whole. Talk about that. Well, Frank has been incredibly encouraging to Bruce in his transition from football to basketball. Frank said in a press conference on Sunday that he thinks Bruce is really coming along learning this new offense. In fact, he said in just three days of practice, Bruce knows more about the offense than some players on the team that have been practicing for an entire month which obviously is great praise for Bruce Ellington, shows that he really knows how to get into the game. But I question whether that's also a lack of commitment or determination from some of the other players on the team. The question really is, can Frank Martin inspire the rest of the team to work like Bruce Ellington does? Because if he does that, I think South Carolina basketball can be strong this year. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, some of the big men down low, uh, they seem we have a massive presence down low in size and ability. Um, but it doesn't seem like they're capitalizing fully on their potential. So talk about some of the big guys we have and, and what they need to do to fully bring South Carolina's basketball team to the level that we want it to be at. Well, that's right. Big men down low, like Lachey Page and Lithuanian Mindaugas Casinas, have really been struggling on the offensive side. And I don't mean with shots. Mindaugas Casinas was 3 for 5 from the field in this game. That's pretty strong for a big man down low. What he does struggle with is when the ball is not in his hands. The offensive rebounds is what he re really struggles on. He needs to grab that rebound. He needs to get up, box out, grab that rebound, and pass it back out to a Bruce Ellington or a Brenton Williams so, we can get, so Carolina can get another possession. And what's been happening is Clemson has been jumping all over our, our offensive rebounds and that is a huge reason as to why they got so many points in transition. So if Carolina basketball wants to win a few more games this year, we're going to really need our big men to step up and get more rebounds. Well, absolutely, Pat. As a former big man in my short span of basketball years, I was definitely taught that getting the boards are important. Absolutely. That's all for the offense. We'll be back shortly with your defensive segment. Welcome back to the boardroom. We're now here to talk about the defensive segment of the Clemson game this past weekend. For starters, Clemson was allowed way too many points off the fast break. Transitions, they were able to get way too many steals off of the Gamecocks defense, and this caused a gross disparity in the game. They had 24 points off of the fast break, whereas we only had 14. Talk about that and how it affected the outcome of the game. Well, like we mentioned earlier, South Carolina really had miscommunication on the offensive side of the ball, some bad passes and that turned into Clemson getting their paws on the ball, uh, transitioning into, like Zach said, fast break points. The problem here really is South Carolina's inability to get back when they do make those turnovers. They're going to happen, but if you get back on defense quickly and prevent the easy layups and the easy shots, then those 24 points that Clemson scored off of turnovers, that's going to decrease, and that could have changed the, pro the progress of this game. What really needs to happen, again, the key is communication. People get, need to get back on the ball. Let's say, you know, Bruce Ellington makes a poor pass. He can't pout for a second. He needs to get down court and 
you know, signal the rest of the team to get down the court as well. And you guard your man, you make the shot a little harder, and uh, it really makes the game closer. And now you can see that this lack of communication really caused Carolina players to sprint down the court. No one knew which guy they were covering, and several of Carolina's players had to commit some unnecessary fouls. And they really were in foul trouble, you know, early in this one. Well, you speak about fouls, Pat, and uh, the Tigers were allowed to the line this past weekend way too many times. And free throws, as all basketball players know, are the easy ones. You have to make the free throws. They went to the line so many times. And, you know, speak about how that also affected the outcome of the game. Clemson was 27 for 37 on free throws. That's 27 points. That Any decrease in that number swings this game dramatically. And the real problem for Carolina was knocking back on the fast break early in this game, and that allowed Clemson to get the free shots. Um, a lot of Carolina players were in foul trouble early, even from just balls on the ground, you know, um, loose balls on the court, people diving all over the place. And, you know, one person who was really in trouble early in this one, one key player in our lineup, Michael Carrera. Well, you do put a name to the issue, Michael Carrera, the Venezuelan for the Gamecocks. He is a young and promising athlete. He looks like he can have a great career here for the Gamecocks. But you do say he is, he is currently a problem as far as foul trouble goes. Talk about what he needs to do to fix this issue. The problem with Michael Carrera is he is just too aggressive on the defensive side. As Frank Martinson said in his press conference, that's a good problem. That's easily fixable. You want an aggressive player on the offensive side of the ball. He will drive to the hoop and get those tough shots every time. But on the defensive side of the ball, he is getting too much in the face of the Clemson players. They go up for a layup or for a jump shot, and he is right up in their grill, slapping at their arms, and that's going to be called a foul every time. I think Carrera had four fouls in the first half in this one, and that's just too many. He was on the bench for way too long. I think he only played 17 minutes in this game, and he's a starter. He should be playing much more than that. That's got to change if Carolina wants to have any success. Absolutely, that is a problem. That's all for the defensive segment. We'll be back shortly for what campus has been buzzing about recently, the bowl game. We're going to the Outback Bowl in Tampa, Florida with the Michigan Wolverines. Hell yeah. Nice transition. I like it. All right, so I'll stop again. Beep, boop, 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 boop. Hello and welcome back to the boardroom. We're here for our final segment, Pat Cloney, along with Zach Brown. This is it, boys and girls, the moment you've all been waiting for. We're here to talk about the big game. January 1st in Tampa, Florida, the Outback Bowl. South Carolina versus the Michigan Wolverines. Zach, what do you think about this game? Well, this is a big one for us, for both teams, as a matter of fact. The Wolverines have drawn the 11th ranked team in the nation as far as the AP poll goes, and they are the 18th team in the nation. The Wolverines are 8-4 and four on the season. However, three of their four losses have been to the three top-ranked teams in the AP poll. The Alabama Crimson Tide, the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, and the Ohio State Buckeyes. Um, Alabama did annihilate the Wolverines. They blew them out in the first game of the season for both teams. However, Michigan was very close with both the Irish and the Buckeyes late in the game. They were, with, with, they were within a touchdown late in the game with both teams, which gives them motivation for the Gamecocks. They think that this game is definitely a game they can come out on the battleground and prove that they are a team to be reckoned with. It's a big Big Ten SEC matchup, um, but we'll see how it goes. First, let's talk about key players of the game. We'll start with Michigan. Who do you think of Michigan's key players, who do you think is going to have to have a big game for them to record a W for this game? Well, first and foremost, the biggest player for the Michigan Wolverines will be quarterback Devin Garner. Converted wide receiver, he came in when Denard Robinson got hurt earlier in the year. He has been surprisingly huge for the Wolverines. He has eight touchdown passes, just four interceptions. He's got over a thousand yards rushing, um, four touchdowns on the ground. He has been great for them. It, really surprising, he's like a mini-me version of Denard Robinson, who will be gone after this year. He's a senior, so look for Devin Gardner. He's got two years of eligibility left. He'll be with Michigan for two more years, but this is his first huge test. 
If he starts, it's going to be a bowl game against, like you said, the 11th ranked team in the nation, an SEC team. It'll be his first test against an SEC team. It should be big to watch him. Another player for Michigan who's going to be a key player, uh, Fitzgerald Toussaint. He's Michigan's running back. He has been big all season. He was a Heisman candidate at one point. He's got a ton of touchdowns for Michigan. He's been most of their offense. Their running game, much stronger than their passing game. Look for those two players to be huge in this game. They could be the difference for the Wolverines. Well, you do have that right, Pat. Two players to be reckoned with for sure. Let's move over to the Gamecocks. Who on the Gamecocks team has to have the game of their life to take the Wolverines and show them that the SEC is the powerhouse conference in the nation. Well, who else but the guy with four and a half sacks in the Clemson game? Jadavian Clowney is enormous in this game. Plain and simple, if he gets to the quarterback, be it Garner or be it Robinson, he will impact this game. He gets a couple sacks, Michigan's offense sputters, they almost have no chance. It'll be huge to see if Clowney can get past Michigan's offensive line, get a couple sacks, you know, knock a couple balls down. That could be huge. Offensive side of the ball, we turn to the quarterback, Connor Shaw. Spurrier says even though Dylan Thompson had a huge game against Clemson, Shaw is his guy through and through. We'll look for him to come back, you know, have a good game both on the ground and through the air. We'll see if he can continue his strong performance. On the offensive side of the ball again, Kenny Miles. South Carolina's offense survives. We live and die on the running game. If Miles gets yardage, it opens up the passing game, the play-action game, a little more for Connor Shaw. He can look deep to A. Sanders or Bruce Ellington. We get some scores that way. So again, look for Shaw and Miles to be key on the offensive side. Now, Zach, I got to ask you, who do you think are the key players for Carolina in this game? Well, I agree with you on the three players that you've named, but I do think, seeing as this is the last game of the season, the seniors for the team are going to come out thirsty for blood. They want the Wolverine throats in their hands. The seniors, this is their last game. This is their last time in Carolina colors. Their last time to truly, truly show what it means to be a Gamecock on the football field. A little gridiron action right. in the best of it. Uh, DJ Swearinger has been absolutely fantastic this year on the defensive side of the ball. He is such a hard hitter. We've actually read reviews about how Swearinger, although he can sometimes come across as some, somewhat pompous, and a little bit overinflated with himself. He is the hardest working guy on the defensive side of the ball. He's there working with all the other guys every day. He's working to really show what it means to be a Gamecock. Devin Taylor on the defensive line. You know, he's the tandem with Jadavian Clowney. Those are two of the most fearsome defensive ends in the country. He's going to have a great game, I believe. It's, again, it's his last time to show what it means to be a Gamecock. He's going to come out, and if he runs through the backfield with Clowney, things are going to get out of hand really fast. Devontae Holloman as well. He had a big interception on, on, in the Clemson game, late in the game. I believe in the secondary, he's going to be big for us. And now, ladies and gentlemen, da, 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 the moment you've all been waiting for, predictions. Pat, your prediction. Okay, so here's the deal. Michigan, they've been strong this year. They're 8-4, and four, like Zach said. Three of their losses to the AP top three. So they might be stronger than their record may predict. However, we've seen them once this year against an SEC team. That was the first game of the season against Alabama. Let's be honest, they got walloped. And in my opinion, South Carolina is just as good an SEC team as Alabama is. I think South Carolina will fare maybe perhaps not as strongly as Alabama did, but they'll come out gun showing and we will trash Michigan. I think the final score will be 35-17. to 17. What do you think, Zach? Well, I agree that South Carolina is going to come out and they are going to give it to Michigan. I don't think it will be quite as wide a spread as you say. I give it a 31-20 game. I believe that Michigan, they are thirsty for this game as well as South Carolina. They believe that this is a time to show that they're a team to be reckoned with to put the Big Ten back on the map. I say 31-20. Like I said, the seniors, I think, are going to have a big game for us. Um, our offense is... I think a powerhouse enough to take care of the, the Michigan defense. And as everybody knows, the South Carolina defense runs rampant against any team. And if we get going on the defensive side of the ball, this game could get ugly quick. I will say something that I disagree with Coach Spurrier on. He says that Shaw is his man through and through, which he is the head ball coach. He's got magic. He's turned South Carolina into a team that is a force to be reckoned with. 
But Thompson had a huge game against Clemson. He came up, he stepped in in a time of crisis when the team really did need him. He threw for an amazing amount of yards, had quite the day against the Clemson Tigers, and showed what it really means to be a rival of the Tigers. Made it four in a row in the Palmetto Bowl, led the team to victory, and he could be big against the Wolverines, I believe. He also fits Spurrier's idea of an offense more than Connor Shaw does. Spurrier, as everybody knows, the Florida Heisman, being a quarterback, he loves the fun and gun offense. Thompson, being a pocket passer, fits that offense as opposed to Shaw, who runs the spread offense and is known for his legs and what he can do to stretch plays out. But I will say that if Shaw comes in the game, he will still do well. I believe, I believe in Connor Shaw as much as anybody else. And like I said, Spurrier's got the magic, so we all trust in him. Final score, 31-20, South Carolina takes it. Well, you heard it here first, folks. Both of us think South Carolina will edge out Michigan in the Outback Bowl. Zach, I'd like to thank you once again for a terrific um, guest performance here on the boardroom. We hope to have you back much soon, very soon, and hopefully you'll be back many times. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Don't go away. When we come back, we'll check out the waiting room where I'm going to show you some of the injuries from South Carolina's basketball team. Hello and welcome into the waiting room. I'm Pat Cloney. Unfortunately, Josh Huffines could not be here today, so I'll have to go it alone. The only injury we really have to talk about this week, Brenton Williams for the Gamecock basketball team. A couple weeks ago in the St. John's game, he hurt his neck when he had a collision on the floor, tumbled around a little bit. He was taken to a hospital, thankfully released almost immediately later that night. He was okay. He has played in the past two games, and he has been solid. And in his interview on Sunday afternoon, in his press conference on Sunday afternoon, sorry, he mentioned that he felt 100%. The neck injury has not been a problem for him, so he is good to go. Again, no other South Carolina injuries to report right now. That's all fine and dandy. We hope that continues. For the, for the waiting room, I'm Pat Cloney, Capital City Sports. Thanks, me. Well, that's all the time we have for this week. Thanks for watching. If you want to check out any more of our highlights, remember, you can go online and check them out at sgtv.sc.edu. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at CCS on SGTV and like us on Facebook. Just search CCS on SGTV. For all of us here at Capital City Sports and for my roommate Zach Brown, have a great day, Carolina.